Now then YouTube, I'm the Topman and welcome back to a complete guide to Thorncraft 5. So, I've got to start off this episode by apologising for the fact that I am currently ill. I am absolutely full of cold and I really cannot apologise enough for it. So if my voice goes strange or so on and so forth, then you know the reason why. So, in the previous couple of episodes, you saw me go through... Um, basic information. You also sort of saw me go through the basic changes from Thorncraft 4 into Thorncraft 5. In today's episode, I'm going to be going through Thaumaturgy, and we're going to start with Basic Wandcraft. Okay, so starting off with Basic Wandcraft, guys, which is right here, um, what you need to do is, create, uh, is craft your first wand, which is the same as always, guys. Again, veterans to Thorncraft will know exactly how this will work and how you make your first wand, but there is a different way in how you fill your wand within Thorncraft 5, and you've probably seen this in previous episodes, but I'm going to go through that for you. Basic Wandcraft, your first tool, basically shows you how to craft your first wand, and you want some iron nuggets, and that will get you two iron caps. You put them on either side of a stick and you've got your iron capped wooden wand. Now, looking at this guys, if I was to get my thermometer right here, you can see that there is aura in the top left hand side. Now, if I hold this in my hand, you will see that the aura is seeping into the wand. You've got to hold it within your hand and it's not particularly fast guys, but it does eventually go ahead and fill all the way up so that this thing is a 100. Everything will be 100. And it will take it directly from the aura. Or at least, I believe it, it, it does take it directly from the aura. So, that being done, that is how, basically what this basic wand craft is. And we'll tell you how to go through that. Um, all other ones that you make from now on, as it states, will be made in an arcane workbench and will require Vs to construct. Next on the list of the basic one card, to apologise, my voice is all over the place, Thaumaturgy. Now, the next on the list is, we're going to go through Foci, the one Foci that you can find going through this. Now, what you can do with one Foci is stick it on the end of your wand and it will use the Vs that's inside your wand to be able to do whatever it is that uh, is described by the particular wand foci that you want to use. So looking at this guys, the first thing that you look at is wand foci. And uh, basically it just explains to you exactly what I've just said. Um, something, wand foci, by combining crystalline beast shards with quartz crystals and infusing them with magic, you're able to align the crystals into a, magical, uh, into a mystical matrix. If the proper types and amounts of Vs is focused through this matrix, it will reshape the raw magical energies into something useful, controlled, and geared to a specific task. Adding a focus to your wand is a simple task. Simply press F while holding the wand, and any foci you are carrying will show up in a radial menu, allowing you to choose from one of the ones you are carrying with a simple click. Your initial experiments have invo uh, involved the shaping of fire and then it goes on to uh, describe how you make the wand focus for fire and you need four fire shards, four nether quartz, a fire charge, 200 ignis and 100 peditio. Now it's worth mentioning here guys that this does require an arcane workbench. How you do this is you get a table which is right here, oh I've got, just so happened to have one, pop that down and then put your wand on the table and that is your arcane workbench. It will hold your iron capped wooden wand but it is worthy to know that this will only hold 100 of every vase. So looking at this guys, you're not going to be able to craft yourself the wand focus for fire and that is because it requires 200 ignis and 100 peditio. So keep those vase costs in mind and we will get to how to be able to get to those at a later stage. That is the fire wand foci. Now next on the list, um, we'll be going to the wand focus of equal trade. This thing is pretty decent actually, it requires a hundred of each vase, it requires four balanced shards, four nether quartz and a quicksilver. You can use this focus to trade dozens of blocks in the world with some you are carrying. You must first choose the block you wish to uh, change other blocks into by sneak and right clicking on the desired block. When the left, when you left click, bleh, when you left click on another block, it will turn into the target block. Right clicking will transform a whole swathe of blocks. So let's take a quick look at this, guys. The wand focus of equal trade. So go and grab it out. 
It's pretty, you know, it's pretty similar to what people already know about, but I'm going to use the Thormy Embossed Silverwood Wand for this one. There we go, we're going to select it there. Now you shift and right click, I'm going to go ahead and maybe just go and grab some dirt. Nah, uh, I'll get some grass, it'll look better. I'll get some grass. And we'll put that there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab myself quite a bit of grass. In fact, no, I'll only do a stack. And you take this shift and right click. Now, you'll see in the top left hand side, it shows um, a grass block in that little circular bit that's at the top left there. And you simply right click on any block that isn't the grass, and it will start to change all of the blocks that of what you've clicked on so in this case it'll be sandstone if there was like cobblestone or something it will change it will stop there but so we can right click this and it will go ahead and change all of the sandstone with grass using the blocks that are in your inventory to a certain uh, range so if we were to go over here there we go some more now it's not actually using the grass blocks that are in there because I'm in creative mode but this is a nice way of changing a whole load of blocks all at once. Next on the one foci list is the one focus of shock, thunder and lightning. It's pretty self-explanatory guys. This focus is capable of focusing elemental energy into bolts of lightning that you can hurl at your enemies. It requires four air shards, four nether quartz and a potato. No idea what, why potato, but still, 100 air, 100 auto, and 100 preditio could be done right from the very start. So, what you do with this, let me go ahead and grab my wand, uh, we will change it out for the shock, um, is basically aim and fire at one of your enemies. And there you go. That is basically how the wand focus shock actually works. Next on the wand focus list is the wand focus of frost. Now this is again very self-explanatory but it does have a quite a wonderful trait actually that you could use to your advantage. So the wand focus of frost requires 4 water shards, 4 nether quartz and a diamond in the middle with 100 aqua, ordo and peditio. This focus is capable of hurling chunks of ice. Care must be taken when aiming, as the ice tends to bounce off solid objects. This can be used to your advantage, however, as you can bounce the shards around corners or even hit multiple foes. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves another creeper, because those things don't actually burn in the light, which is great. Now we're going to change this out to the frost one. And don't forget, like it says, oh, oops, it bounces off solid objects like that. And you can bounce them around corners. So you can actually, ooh, watch out. Make it and bounce it off mu uh, multiple enemies. I'm a more of a lover of the shock than the, uh, the frost itself, but that is basically what that does. Next on the list is one of the fan favourites. It is the one focus of excavation. This is really, really neat, and I absolutely love this wand, guys. So you're going to need four earth shards, four nether quartz, an emerald, 200 terra, 50 Predetio and 50 Ordo. This focus turns your wand into a tool capable of moving vast amounts of earth and stone with little effort. Simply point it at what you want to excavate and the magic does the rest. Tougher materials take longer to mine and anything other than earth, stone or similar materials will take much longer to mine. So let's go ahead and put this on the end of the wand and I will show you exactly what this can do. So we're going to go over here to this. Now what this basically acts as is um, a shovel or a pick or whatever it is that you want to use and it will start mining stuff for you like this which is pretty awesome. I mean the um, as you can see the animations don't quite match up to the the one the actual um, you know the the beam so I mean that's something that's going to be worked on though because of course it, I think it's Forge's problem at the moment with something or other. I don't, I don't know what it is. But uh, basically, that's what you do with this. Now, it actually uses the Terra aspect out of your wand, so make sure that when you've used it, um, you let give it time to recharge, and then you can start again. And there you go. That is the wand focus of excavation. The next one is the one focus portable hull. Now, this one actually does require infusion to be unlocked, which I will get to in a future episode. It won't be in this one, but it's just to go through this anyway for you guys. The one focus post, uh, portable hull is pretty decent, guys. It really is very, very good. Um, no longer will you need doors if you want to use this to get through walls. You can do. You've succeeded 
and using Vs to create extra dimensional spaces. Using this focus on a wall or other surface will create an extra dimensional passage leading to the other side. This hull only remains open for a few seconds. Extra dimensional hulls cannot be created through certain kinds of matter or particularly complex objects. So in other words like uh, tile entities and stuff like that, it won't be able to just move machines I don't think. So this thing will actually require you to do infusion. Again, I'll be going through this in a later stage. So you need three nether quartz, an entropy shard, an earth shard, and an air shard infused into an ender pearl. Uh, you need 10 alienists, 25 motors, 25 peditio, and 10 permutatio. This instability is minor. Again, I'll be going through all of this in, a, uh, in another episode. But for the moment, let's go ahead and change it out. Now, again, I do apologise for my voice. It's, get, it's, it's getting worse as I go through uh, recording this episode. But what we're going to do, we're going to come over here and we're simply going to right-click on here and it creates a hole. The size of the hole depends on how long it will stay open. The longer the hole, the, the longer it will take for it to uh, stay open for. But eventually, it will just go boo, out of existence. And uh, if you're stuck in there, guys, you will be... Uh, you will get killed, basically, by getting suffocated in walls. So some common. Oh, some decent stuff in here actually. Is that common? No, it's rare. Sweet. And ooh, this is very interesting. Look at all this. There's a whole load of uh, auto shards right there. Ring of protection. Got some. Ah, nice, good stuff. Anyway, I'm surprised that this hasn't. Oh, it has actually closed. You just can't see it yet. Let me go ahead and save and quit and go back into it. And see if it's disappeared. It has disappeared. It should make a sound. But this should also disappear. From the world. And it doesn't seem to be doing that. I don't know if it's a bug. I don't know what. Yeah, because it's just it's not there anymore. But it still shows as being there. Ah. Well, as an op, if you are watching this. That seems to be a bug. In, uh, in my eyes. That'd be great. Anyways, that is the One Focus Portable Hull. There's a couple more to go through, guys, and then we will go on to a different episode. Well, I'll probably do focal manipulation in this episode, but then we'll go through all the rest of the stuff in a different one. So, One Focus Nine Hells. Now, everybody knows about these that I've been playing uh, Thorncraft 4 in the past, but if you haven't, then again, all of this stuff will be brand new to you, and I want to go through it for you guys. So, One Focus Nine Hells also requires infusion to be unlocked before you can get it. But this basically is three nether quartz, fire, entropy, and air shard with a magma cream in the middle, and that will get you the One Focus Nine Hells. So what does this do? Well, let's go ahead and put a creeper right there. I'm going to leave you over there. And let's go ahead and change you out. So what this will do is it will summon um, bats. If you've ever been to the nether, the, uh, there is certain hell bats, I think they're called. Oh, I can't remember what they're called, actually. But when you do this, they will go... I know what the, Well, we'll try, at least, anyway. I think that's uh, the fence. They're not too fantastic uh, trying to get through the fence, by the way. There we go, look. And the creeper's just, like, blown it up. But there we go. That is basically what the One Focused Nine Hells does. It will send out these bats that will kill, um, you know, your foes for you. And a bit of forbidden knowledge for you guys, just after you found One Focus Nine Hells, you will get the Tier 5 Upgrade Vampire Bats. Now these, this upgrade changes the summoned bats into Vampire Bats. Not only will they suck the life out of their target to replenish their own, but some of the stolen life force is given to their summoner, which is a very, very useful upgrade to the One Focus Nine Hells. So next on the list is Focal Manipulation. That's probably what we're going to end this uh, this particular video with. What is Focal Manipulation? Well, this is the Focal Manipulator. You can craft it with two iron ingots, an arcane stone slab, two arcane stone, a primal charm, two gold, and one stone table. Now, the primal charm is done with a golden ingot, balance shard, air shard, earth shard, what, basically all the shards, uh, apart from the tainted ones, and 125 of each single um, aspect in your wand. Now, oops, what I want to do is this. The focal manipulator is pretty awesome, guys. It really is. So, let's go and take a look at it. Pop that down. Basically, what this will allow you to do is put these into here, and it will be able to upgrade your wand focus for you. So, it's gone from the normal bog standard um, 
wand focus and it will do other things. So I've got the portable hole in here at the moment, you can see it extends it. This upgrade increases the duration of any effects, so basically it will last longer. Um, enlarge upgrades the how large an area the focus is powers effect, so in other words the hole will be bigger. Um, in terms of radius, and frugal, uh, this upgrade reduces the V's cost of activating the voc focal's powers by 10% per level. So basically it costs cheaper um, to be able to cast it, and that is a one focus portable hull. But if we were to get something like shock, for instance, oops, I put that into there, we've got potency, which upgrades the strength. And depending on what focus you put into this uh, focal manipulator, it depends on what is available to you. And of course, frugal is usually one of the ones anyway. Um, it requires eight experience cost, of which I don't, I'm in creative. Does it not see me as being in creative? There we go, it does. But it will suck it from the air around you again. Not like in the last one, and you can see that we're actually running low on some of these aspects um, in the top left hand side there. The reason, uh, and this is where nodes come into it, and nodes, and we'll get more into this in, uh, in, uh, in episodes coming up, but nodes come more into this to replenish the aura of which you are using. Very, very important, this guys. But there's the frugal upgrade, and you get level two. I'm just going to go ahead and do that, guys, and it's going to pull from the uh, surrounding area. Again, a lot more vis cost than what it was in previous versions of Thorncraft. Be very, very aware of that, guys. But eventually, this will go. And usually, in on level three, there is something else that opens up. Now it's not necessarily going to be the shock focus, but it could be the wand of excavation, uh, sorry, the foc the excavation, focus of excavation. Um, let me see if a new one, yes, there we go, look, level three and some new ones have actually opened up. Chain lightning, this upgrade reduces the speed at which the focus uh, fires bolts, but the damage is increased and the bolt can chain up to two additional targets. But the other one that you can go for is Earth Shock. Instead of a bolt of lightning, the focus now lobs a ball of electrical energy. It inflicts damage in an area around where it hits and leaves the ground dangerously electrified for some time. It's worth noting, guys, that one of these, if you pick one of these, the other one will then not be available and level 4 and 5 will be back to potency and frugal. At least, I believe that that is the way that it used to work and I believe that this is the way that it works in Thorncraft 5. But that is focal manipulation. Have a play around with different focuses or foci in there and uh, see what you can get. Now with all these foci that are flying around in your inventory, it's worth noting as well the focus pouch. The focus pouch is basically 7 leather with a mundane belt and a gold ingot and 100 of Terra, Ordo and Peditio. And this acts as like a backpack really for all of your foci. So, let me go ahead and grab one. <coughs> pouch. No, that's not how you spell pouch. There we go, look. Let's go and grab one of them. Open it on a right click, and there you go. So we basically stick all of our pouches into there, and uh, when you go ahead and press F, it will already be there. As it is, uh, as it is, uh, you know, maybe a part of your inventory there. So that is the focus pouch. That is going to be it for today's episode, guys, where we just focused on foci and the bits and bobs that go with uh, one foci. In the next episode, we're going to go through the different uh, crafting things that we've got down here, the different ones that are available to you, and also the caps that go along with it, guys. Uh, and then, hopefully, we'll be able to get into some of this stuff as well. Our manipulation is something that is going to be massive in Thorncraft 5, and I'm sure you guys are going to want to know how that works. But for the moment, that is the end of this episode. Don't forget there is timestamps in the description of this episode, so if you're looking for something in particular, you can always do that in Thorncraft 5 series now. I'm going to make sure that that is in every single one of my videos. I will see you guys for the next one. Until then, I've been the Top Man. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, stay safe.